Okay, this is chapter four, lesson five. It's converting measurement units, and we're going to be looking at pages 289 through 292. So I need you to open up to 289 so that we can get started. And it looks like this with this cute little teddy bear on the front. Isn't he adorable? All right, you need to have this in front of you because you are going to be writing notes on these pages. And um, although you can keep notes on a separate piece of paper as well, when I'm checking for your uh, participation, I want to see what I write you're writing. So please, if you see me writing something on here, you need to be filling in as well. And so the first thing here says, and I cut out some things to make room for myself, it says that the animal, um, the table shows the approximate weights of ton in tons of several large land animals. One ton is equivalent to 2,000 pounds. You can use a ratio table to convert each weight from tons to pounds. So we've got a grizzly bear, which is one ton, a white rhinoceros, which is four tons, a hippopotamus, which is five tons, and an, an African um, elephant woo -woo, is eight tons. You know I love my elephants. Complete the ratio table. The first two ratios are done for you. To produce equivalent ratios, multiply the quantities in each row by the same number. So you see that um, the first one we that they did already for us, one ton is equivalent to 2,000 pounds. And we have that right here in the story that one ton is equivalent to 2,000 pounds. So obviously, if something is four tons, we're going to multiply four times 2,000 pounds, and we're going to know that it's 8,000 pounds. So something that's four tons, like this white rhinoceros here, would be 8,000 pounds. Um, so now we're going to figure out what it would be for the hippopotamus and the African elephant. And so I'd like for you on your own to tell me what five tons would be in pounds and what eight tons would be in pounds. So go ahead and pause now. All right, well, what you should have is that for five tons, it's going to be 10,000 pounds. Sorry, it's not writing very well. And that for eight tons, we're talking about 16,000 pounds. So all we did was take the quantity, which is 8 times 2,000, and we get 16,000 um, pounds. So my beautiful African elephant is 16,000 pounds. Holy moly. Now the next thing it says is use the graph plane, uh, the coordinate plane shown. Graph the ordered pairs, tons and pounds, from the table to, to the coordinate plane. So it says label the horizontal axis weight in tons and label the vertical axis weight in pounds. Now go ahead and do that and when you come back I'm going to show you the answers. Pause again. So you should have labeled the bottom of the graph weight in tons. That's the horizontal. I always think of the horizon, you know, oh the sun comes up and these, here's the horizon. Um, and then vertical is weight in pounds and that's um, the 2,000 through 20,000, which makes sense because if you look at your graph, of course, your pounds are pretty big and your tons are kind of small. Now it says to connect the points and describe the graph. So for one ton, we know it's going to be 2,000 pounds. For um, four tons, it's going to be 8,000 pounds. For five tons, it's going to be 10,000. Oops didn't really make it there, 10,000 pounds. And then for eight tons, it's going to be 16,000 pounds. Um, and if you look and you connect these, well, I didn't do a very good job connecting them, but you get the idea, it should be showing as a straight line because for every one pound or for every one ton, there's 2,000 pounds. All right, so let's look at the next page. The next page shows us that when we convert larger units to smaller units, it says to each relationship in the table can be written as a ratio. For example, you know that one yard is three feet, so that you can use the ratio three feet over one yard to convert from yards to feet. Um, like a unit rate, you can use a unit ratio um, where one is the denominator um, for one unit. So if you're going to do the ratio with uh, feet to yards, you're going to have three feet on top and one yard on the bottom, and that shows a unit ratio since that denominator is a one. Um, it says dimensional analysis is the process of including units of measurements as factors when you compute. And think, remember factors, when we are doing um, ratios and we have 
factors like two times three times four, that kind of thing, we can cross simplify. And so we're going to be doing that as well. We're going to think of um, those units like they are factors that we can cross simplify. So um, we'll come back and use this unit of measurement, um, this conversion rates, in a little bit. So number one, convert 20 feet to inches. And we know that one foot equals 12 inches. So here's our, right here is our conversion that we know. We can get that from our little conversion thing here, that one foot is 12 inches. And if we're writing it as a unit ratio, we can write it as 12 inches over one foot. Now, the book doesn't go into a lot of details about why it is that we put the foot on the bottom, but I think that's something that we really need to discuss here, that if we are going to be able to cross-simplify units and we only want one unit left, then if you look, um, sorry, if you look at this, we want to be able to get rid of feet so that we have inches left. So to be able to do that, to be able to cross-simplify, I have to put my feet on the bottom, and that for, therefore I can cross-simplify. The video that I'm going to have you watch tomorrow night from Greg um, Swan, Schwanbeck, he does a really good job without even talking at all, showing how these go through. So if you'd like to watch that video tonight as well, you certainly can. And then I also have a video um, on EduCreations that if you go to Canvas, um, you can find that EduCreations video I did that's about the magic one for 4.5 converting rates. So you're welcome to look at that as well. All right. So now that we've crossed out our feet and we just have inches left, we're just going to multiply like normal. We can do 20 times 12 because that's going to be our hamburger on the top. And then 1 times 1 on the bottom is just going to be 1 on the bottom. And so we ultimately get um, 240 inches is equivalent to 20 feet. And doesn't that make sense? 20 feet, a foot, is like the ruler. And there's 12 inches in that ruler. So there's a lot more inches, since there's little, than there are actual in, in, a, in a foot. So the small number is going to be the feet because that's the larger scale item. And then there's going to be a lot more inches because they're the smaller scale item. Uh, so A, B, and C are for you to do on your own. Again, remember that you want to cross simplify out the units that are in the same. So um, make sure that you put the unit that you can cross out on the bottom and that the one that you want to be left with is on top. Um, go ahead and work on them on your own. Let's see how you do. And when you come back, we'll go over them together. Okay, for A, we've got 36 yards, how many feet? We know that the um, conversion rate we're going to use is one yard equals three feet squared. So we're going to need to set up our, what I call the magic one, it's our conversion rate um, right here. Now. The way that I've said that you would figure out which one goes on top and which one goes on the bottom, because it doesn't automatically go in order, I'm not going to automatically put one yard over three feet, because then I can't cross simplify. So we're not going to do that. Instead, we're going to do three feet over one yard, and that way we can cross simplify out our yards, and all we have left for units is feet. And that's exactly what we want in the end. So yards are gone and we're just left with feet. So now I'm going to do 36 times 3 and it would be over 1 which over anything over 1 is itself so I'm going to get rid of the 1 anyway. Um, so 36 times 3, we're going to do 3 times 6 is 18, carry the 1, 108 feet is equivalent to 36 yards. They're the same thing. For B, example B, we've got three-fourths tons times, and then this is where we're going to use our conversion rate. And the conversion rate I'm using to go from tons to pounds is one ton is equal to 2,000 pounds, and pounds is abbreviated LBS. Um, so I'm going to need to substitute in so I can cross-simplify out my tons, and to be able to do that, I need to put my tons on the bottom, so my one ton will go on the bottom, and my 2,000 pounds will go on top. That way I can cross simplify out my tons, and all I'm left with for um, unit rates, will, or units, I'm sorry, will be pounds. So now can I cross simplify anything else? Hopefully you see that you can cross simplify 4 and 2,000. 
4 goes into 2,000 500 times. 4 goes into 4 one time. So now really what we're doing is 3 times 500, and that's going to be 1,500 pounds. So the answer is 1,500 pounds is equivalent to 3 fourths of a ton, which makes sense. If 2,000 pounds is one ton, 3 fourths of a pound would be 15, or 1,500 pounds. Now with a problem like 1 and 1 half quarts times blank, and we're trying to get our, um, our units to become pints, we're going to use the conversion 1 quart is equal to 2 pints. And again, I want my quarts to cross-simplify out, so I'm going to put my quarts on the bottom, and then my 2 pints on top. Now here's the other thing. We can cross-simplify out the quarts, but if you notice, we're dealing with 1 and a half. You can change 1 and a half to 1.5, because that's the same as one and a half, or you can change it to um, an improper fraction like three halves. So it's going to be completely up to you which method you'd like to use. Either way, the end result answer will be um, three pints. That one and a half quarts is equal to three pints. If there's two pints in one quart, then there's three pints in one and a half quarts, which hopefully you can see how that makes sense. All right, the next page. Um, I just wanted to point out the little sticky note that they have here saying that multiplying by one, that when you have a ratio of three feet and one yard, it is equivalent to one because the numerator and denominator really do represent the same amount. So if I have 12 inches in one foot, I know that one foot is equal to 12 inches. So this is the same as saying 12 inches over 12 inches, which makes one. So I just wanted to make sure that I pointed this out. Remember I mentioned earlier that there is another video that you can watch about the magic one. And that's on edgy creations. Alright, so for definitions, it had said that a, a like a unit rate, we have a unit ratio um, is one which the denominator is one unit. So the ratio 3 feet to 1 yard is a unit ratio. Dimensional analysis is the process of including units as measurements as you compute. So that's where we cross simplify. <clears throat> Example number two, Marco mixes one fourth cup of fertilizer with soil before planting each bulb. How many fluid ounces of fertilizer does he use per bulb? So we have one fourth cup and ultimately we want to do something with ounces. And actually I'm going to move this so I have some more space to work. Okay, so we have one fourth cup times, and this is where we're going to put our magic one, our unit rate or ratio, um, and we want to end up with ounces. So let's go back. We have that um, one cup is equal to eight fluid ounces. I'm sorry, let me add the fluid there, fluid ounces. And so we need to decide how we're going to set up the one cup and eight fluid ounces. Are we going to make it um, eight fluid ounces on top and one cup on the bottom, or one cup on top and eight fluid ounces on the bottom. Remember that I said that we want to cross simplify? So we're going to put the one cup on the bottom and the eight fluid ounces on top. And this way we can cross simplify out our cups, and we're left with just fluid ounces. And that's what we want our answer to be in the end anyway. So now, is there any other cross simplifying that we can do? Hopefully you see that you can cross simplify your eight and your four. They're both divisible by 4. So we now have um, 1 times 2. And then on the bottom is 1 times 1, which is just going to drop off anyway. So 1 fourth cup is the same as 2 fluid ounces. All right, for example D, I want you to go ahead and solve that on your own. So you need to pause now. And when you come back, we'll go over the answers. And I've to make it more convenient, I've put the conversion rates right here. All right, so we have one eighth mile and we are going to look at what we can get for feet. And we know that one mile is equal to 5,280 feet. So I need to set up my magic one right over here in my um, conversion table here. 
So let's make this um, 5280 feet on top and one mile on the bottom. And I'd like you to think about why is it that I made that decision? How did I come about deciding that I put miles on the bottom? Hopefully you're saying so that we can cross simplify out miles. Now we've got miles are gone. The only measurement left that we have is feet, which is good because that's what we want. So now can we cross simplify? Now you may not realize it, but we can cross simplify. Eight does go evenly into 5,280. Um, Hopefully you've already done this on your own, so you might have figured that out by now. And then this becomes one. And then ultimately I'm going to do one times 660 and then one over one times one and so it's going to be 660 feet is the same as one eighth of a mile. Alright so converting smaller units to larger units we have remember that the ratios are one yard and three feet or three feet and one yard and that they're equivalent so to convert smaller units to larger units you need to choose the ratio that allows you to divide out the common units. That's that cross simplifying I was talking about. We put the feet on the bottom so we could cross simplify out the feet and then we're all we're left with is yards so we can get our answer to be in yards. And if we have this situation, we can't cross simplify out anything and so we're going to end up with feet squared on top and yards on the bottom and that is not going to give us any kind of conversion. So we do not want to use that method. So example number three, convert 15 quarts to gallons. Since one gallon equals four quarts, and quarts are smaller units than gallons, we're going to use the ratio of one gallon to four quarts. So we have 15 quarts. We're going to put the four quarts on the bottom. Now we're going to go ahead and do our hamburger. And so that's going to be 15 over four gallons. Well, obviously that's not a very good answer. You could do um, top dog in the dog house and get the decimal answer, or you could just make this into a um, mixed number, which would be three and three-fourths gallons. So three and three-quarters gallons is equivalent to 15 quarts. Now you're going to do examples E, F, and G on your own, and when you come back, I'll show you the answers. So pause the video now. Here's the answer for E. We were able to put the feet on the bottom and miles on top, cross simplify out our feet. We could also cross simplify the 2,640 and the 5,280 and get one over two. So we have one half mile or 0 0.5 miles. Either way, same answer. Okay, the answer for F will be 25 fourths of a pound or six and one fourth pound. Okay, and the answer for G, uh, we put our one pint on top, two cups on the bottom, cross simplify our cups, and we end up with three halves or one and a half pints is equal to three cups. All right, and then Yumika make, needs four and one half feet of fabric to make a costume for a play. How many yards of fabric does she need? So we're going from feet to yards, and we know that um, there are three feet, and that's equal to one yard, and you can use your reference sheet for that. And so we're going to set it up so that we can cross simplify out feet. Now notice that you could have changed it to 4.5 feet times one over three, one yard over three feet, and cross this out, but then you're going to end up having 4.5 yards over three and then you'll have to still end up doing the division um, in the end no matter what your answer will be one and a half cups so whether you do it this way or sorry cups yards or the other way you're all set all right so how can you use ratios to convert units of measurements we can cross simplify out the units and become um, a different unit using our magic one thanks so much see you in school